Well, my co-pilot and I, that's Travis Henry. Hazard reported ahead. Waze is telling me there's a hazard report it reported ahead. Don't see it. Um, Travis and I went to the meadows today. We get done at the burn. My poor wife, Amy. Uh, my God almighty. So we've been short staffed this week. Uh, just getting back up to staffing now. But all week we had to work, well, we, I say that very lightly, my wife had to work her butt off because I had to leave by 12.30 every day. So yesterday, we schooled 12 horses. I don't even know how you guys, what time did you guys get done? Well, I got done at like one. Oh, so you pieced out too. She told me to leave, but she didn't get That's home how she is. Three. Yeah, she got home at three. So my wife has been working her butt off all week in the stalls on the horses. And it wasn't like I was, you know, just left. I had to leave. I waited as long as I could to go uh, race um, at Glare AM yesterday. Big mile from her. And slightly trumped today, although the class below, slightly trumped by Wara We Welcome today. So we get done going with all the babies. The only baby that didn't go behind the gate this week was Matt's MVP. That is only because he had a little bit of a cough. Uh, we'll go a slow mile with him Saturday if he seems better. And then we will uh, put him behind the gate with everybody else next week. Next Wednesday, where everybody will be behind the gate. All 21 is the plan to be behind the gate next, um, next Wednesday. So for today, um, got up this morning. My poor wife, uh, thankfully, we gave everybody a rest yesterday that trained. So we had 12 trained yesterday. They didn't go out today. Just had a day of rest, so to speak. Uh, nine more today than Matt's MVP. We scratched him because he was a little bit coughing a little bit. So he jogged. I get to the barn at 8.30 with the kids. Um, we had eight to train, eight to school. Plus, we had Travis School, That's My Girl, in preparation for a race next week in Indiana because he's going to be driving her. So, uh, how did she, she school good, you said? Good. Yeah, she schooled good, 59. She was strong, though? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if she was strong. He says she had, but yeah. But he might be saying that just because he knows I'm taping a video for you guys about her. She went 59. She was good. Um, and then I qualified. Compass Rose DC was awesome now. The race office called. Of course, we stretched her out a little bit in the qualifier. I wanted to give her seven or eight days. Race office called. They needed a horse. Uh, they needed a horse for a class, Compass Rose DC fit, so fine. We gave them Compass Rose DC. I told Jason, just five days of light jogging, lots of fluids for Compass. She was very, very good in her qualifier. Now, you might look at the other qualifier and say, oh my God, that, that path of totality was awesome. She wasn't awesome. A little rickety in the corners, might need a little shoeing change. Uh, and you see this all the time. She was so close. And I really could have maybe raced her without the hobbles and tried her without the hobbles, but I didn't. Um, I didn't do that. But she qualified adequate. Qualified in a way, in such a manner that I don't think I'll race her at Northfield Park. I think she'll race at the Meadows. And I don't want to race her right back in a week. I want to tinker around with her a little bit. See if we can get her right. I was happy with her today, but I thought she could have been better. Strong mile, 57 last quarter, 29 and one. Good mile for her this morning. So that was good. Uh, all three of the qualifiers and schooners went very well. Then we came out on the track with the babies. We had two, two breakers, I think we said today, right? Yeah. Two yesterday. Uh, of Tom Lock made a break leaving, which is very rare for her. And then uh, Unbeatable Kemp got run into and made a break. So that was two breakers. And then today, Spent made a little break in the last turn. Now, I haven't spoke to Chris Lems, who went with Spent. I just looked back. I saw that he was way back. I know he made a break. Uh, he had, he had uh, touched himself a little bit. So I want to talk to Chris Lems a little bit about what he thought of Spent. Uh, I have not done that just yet. And then we and then uh, Luke Ebersol went with Massive Profit, and he made a break. I'm going to make some changes on uh, Massive Profit. I might go back to a set of hobbles with him just to see how he is this week. I want to get a look at him. Uh, but overall, I'm not too concerned about anybody that did anything wrong. Out of 21 trainers behind the gate, four uh, 20 trainers, four made breaks, one was interfered with, so three unforced errors, and one that missed. Of all the horses that have gone, I've been extremely happy with everybody. All the horses have gone. Now, I was going to about to say 2-6, two, two, but I know one that went at least 2-5 today. Um, 
the fastest two-year-old we have right now, and nobody's going to believe me. Sweet on Pete obliterated the little mini school that she was in with uh, to five and looked very good. You got to believe was second to her. Now, uh, Travis and I went the next set. We were right together at the wire. Um, I had one to skip a few who cut the entire mile out and I believe I beat him. I think I did. I beat you. That's okay. I'll call it a tie. Just see if you will. Um, I, we tied. We tied. Uh, he had Bomb Hugger, who hasn't done a ton of work since she got here. She had a little filling in her left ankle when she get here, got here, and I just want to make sure she was okay. Got a complete green light from the vet, so we put her behind the gate today. She was very strong. Hobbles were a little tighter than they needed to be. We're going to work on letting them out, get a set of hot, get a set of bell boots off of her. But she was very strong today. You probably won a mile and two seven. Come a half and one one. I come a half and one oh two with. Uh, 101 and a bit, 102 with uh, with Skippy. She was very, very good today also. uh, Who else was in there? Who was third, fourth? Uh, Procrastinator, he said, was hitting the jog card. He was hitting the stirrups. He won a mile on 2.8. Granite Hill stayed flat, won a mile on 13. Now, I asked him, I put Travis on the spot. I said, of all the horses you've trained since you've been here, of all the horses you've seen, who's the best one? Who do you think's the best one? And I was shocked. He said, Prairie Fire. So far has been the no, horse. He's the one who is like stood out that like surprised me. Okay, but that that wasn't what that is what I asked you. I said who's the best one. And now you're saying he's oh well, he surprised you. What did he do? Like show you a trick, a magic trick? Okay, well like if you want the best one it would have been that rose rose above is it rose above it? Oh yeah, rose above it. He didn't eat great this morning too. Um uh, he was a little picky with his feet. He trained him yesterday and he kinda of run away on him a little bit. I knew he would. Uh, we didn't really help Travis out that much yesterday. No mini bit, no snake cord, no ear hood, no ear plugs. Just bare pole, rose above it with a set of hobbles on, and he got a little, a little, little hot, a little, little uh, crazy. But he was strong. You said well, I didn't know you felt that highly of him until right now, actually. Yeah. So that's Prairie good. Fire, Prairie Fire like stood out just because he went beyond my expectations. Oh, but you you don't know him that well, but you have expectations, so. So Prairie Fire, he went beyond his, his limited up. expectations. He stepped up, as you just said. Uh, Rose Above It was very strong. Um, and then Bomb Hugger, you never really got a good look at Bomb Hugger today because the hobbles were tight. She hasn't been a lot of work. You haven't had a lot of work into her. Lots of time. I'm so happy to see everybody do the work well. This week, as I'm talking, I'm trying to think of the horse that stood out the best to me. I think Voyage of Ice and Fire, because I come first over, and I took a run at, at Rose Above It. Had I been a little more aggressive when I moved him, I think there might have been, I might have been taking a trip to the Winter Circle, but I just kind of let him coast up alongside. That won't happen again. Um, but the horse that looked good to me also, Three Point Blue Chip, you know, if we're going to talk about a horse that went beyond expectations, he's a horse we have all the expectations for. He was the most expensive horse we've ever bought, and I have super high expectations for him. But he's kind of been hanging out in the middle of the crew all winter, right? You know, it pulls up once in a while. you got to watch him. And, and I put him on the front because the other two horses were a little steppy. And then he did get a little, like he was going to pull up on the front end. Uh, and then, but as soon as Hill of Magic got in front of me, he just sat there and waited and waited and then exploded down the lane. We were trotting pretty good, and he just inhaled the pr- uh, Purple Aura and Hill of Magic and drove away from them. He was very, very strong. But Voyage of Ice and Fire was all business, I, I think. I, I like what I see from him, and I like the direction he's heading in. We're talking about the Ohio horses. Hill of Magic looked great. Purple Aura, you said she was trotting better, right? So she was trotting better. Uh, Prairie Fire was very, very good also. So a great week of training. Uh, next week should be cool. Now I need to put in place, I need to talk to Steve, the graphics guy, the, 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 the simulcast guy at Northfield to see if, if in fact, Wednesday is doable. We're go. Uh, talk to Curtis and see if we're a go. Check the weather, both for here and for Ontario. Make sure we're a go in that regard. And, and if that regard, and if we are, it looks like we're going to have double billing again. We're going to go with the babies behind the gate. We're going to stay around 2-6 for the next couple of weeks, three weeks maybe. I don't think they need to go much faster than that just yet. It is May 15th, 13th. So till, let's just say till the last week of May or the first week of June, we're going to hang out around 2-6. So we'll have 21 behind the gate. 21 will go behind the gate next Wednesday here. And then at the same time, 
actually before that because they don't go behind the gate till 11 so that'd be cool it'll be like a like a double billing for, for movies like at the drive-in yeah. you'll have the early show which will be Tomiko Training Center and you'll have the late movie which will be the schoolers from Northfield Park that was what we're planning to do probably a lot of people happy to hear that especially after the abysmal news today June 2nd the lockdown was pushed to for the people saying Anthony you should have got those horses out of there hold on just a second I told you guys that the first part of June wouldn't have mattered. The only way that I will I will turn myself into an I told you so situation with the, hey, we should have got them out of there, is if it's June 15th, which it does not look like it's going to be. So, um, the horses still will be ready for May 20th. They should be very ready for June 1st. Where we welcome as a winner here today. She'll be heading back probably after her next start, which will be 10 days to two weeks before she's supposed to start in Ontario. Have some great, uh, some great light work under her. So that's good. She was good today. Um, so that's the plan right now. A big night last night. Mama Knows Best looked incredible. I told everybody Mama Knows Best was different from the day I qualified her three weeks ago. She just seems more professional. She gets, she's not sweating and all as stressed out as she was before kept her off the gate last night. She wasn't hot at the gate. Just let her float out of there. Ended up fourth or fifth along the rail, second over, pounced on them. That's how you're supposed to race. She looked like a million dollars. I was very pumped with her. A couple of questions to answer on the two-hour drive back between Travis and I'll be whether he wants to go to Indiana next Wednesday. You may very well see Fox Valley, Britska, Italian Grit, and, uh, and our girl. That's my girl entered in to go. That's my girl will be in the mini series, so like the, the grassroots. The other two Colts are kind of fillers. I don't know where we're going to put Italian Grit yet, but Fox Valley Bretchka fits the condition claimer there. 14 for non-winners of two. His claiming tag would be 21,000. Um, we'll see if he can do there. He raced pretty good last night. I thought he raced well. Got away, followed well, raced well. Italian Grit, I wish there was a softer spot for him to land just yet. Who knows, maybe they'll open that condition claiming class open. Uh, open it up and split it. If that's the case, it'll be a great week. So it looks like uh, Travis will be heading, thinking about it, eh? yeah. little Indiana next. Indiana for next, uh, you can be a Hoosier for the day. Indiana Hoosier for the day for Travis Henry next week. Um, we'll stay here as I got, I think we got what, Philly Fringes, Compass Rose DC Tuesday, Wednesday, potentially George now if we take those two horses off the table. Um, I guess we'll see who else. Anyway, that's what went on today. That's what's going on next week. It was another good day at the stable. One raced, one winner. Yesterday we had a good day. Tomorrow we're not racing. Saturday we got well and down. A couple others. Things keep creeping along and getting closer to the summer. The babies are good right now. Let's keep that going. We'll talk to you all very, very soon. Uh, I hope it's nice for you. It's a beautiful day today. Take care.